Okay, so I'm about to try and rip up this floor. Gotta go through, take out all the screws. Let's go. The floor in the school bus is made from a rubber layer on top and then three quarter inch plywood secured to the floor. There are also a few metal strips down the middle secured with screws. It's important to note that the screws through these metal rails and the screws holding the wood into the floor both go completely through the metal of the floor. We started by using a knife to cut through the rubber layer on top and then we just peeled it back. We removed as many screws as we could with a normal screwdriver, but where they were too rusted and started to break, we had to get a pry bar to start popping the wood out with a little bit of force. What worked best for us was getting a small little crowbar to start the wood and once we got underneath it a little bit, we used a large crowbar with a lot of leverage to pop the entire board out. This is a lot easier with two people because you can both get at it from different angles and then carry the board out together. Because we were not able to remove the screws with a screwdriver and we had to pop them out, we ended up with a lot of little screw nubs that stick out and we had to grind them off at the end. The floor under the driver's seat and near the gas pedals have a lot of weird shapes, so if you're planning to replace them by putting them back in, it's important to take pictures before you totally remove them. The rubber over the stairs are held in with six screws through the floor and quite a lot of adhesive, so it really just takes a bit of brute force to get them off. Up next is the hardest part of the entire floor demolition, removing the handicap wheelchair rails. We're going to give you a lot more info about what we tried and what worked for us. All right, so last night I bought an angle grinder because we're trying to get the rails out of the floor. Um, didn't have a lot of success, so I went on YouTube, uh, tried to figure out how to get these rails out. Turns out it's really difficult. So these rails are bolted through the floor. On the top, they just have an Allen key, and on the bottom, the bolts stick out pretty far, and they're all rusty and crappy, so there's not really a good way to get to them. Um, to add to that, some of them are like above the wheels and there's like a bolt every four or five inches. So there's tons and tons of these. Um, so what most people do is they cut the wood out between the strips. Then they go from the side and try and pop each single bolt either using a reciprocating saw or a grinder from the side. So that's my goal for the day. We're going to try and get the wood out in between and then from there we're going to hopefully pop this out. Wish me luck. I tried using a reciprocating saw from the side, which is working okay, but the blades were becoming dull very quickly, and to replace them all the time would get pretty expensive. All right, we're moving on to another attempt, so we'll see if this works. Um, we have a chisel, a couple of sledgehammers, things like that. We're gonna see if we can get a chisel to just snap the bolts in half. I don't have high hopes, but we're gonna try anyway. All right, so been inside trying to cut off stuff for like a long time. It's not working very well. So I'm gonna see if I can try and cut some of it from the bottom, but as you can see, it's difficult because we have the exhaust pipes, the wheels, everything's kind of in the way. So I'm gonna see if there's a couple I can get from below and maybe that'll speed things up for like half of it. So wish me luck. <laughs> This approach also did not work because there was not enough room for the tools and I started hitting the frame and cutting things I did not want to cut. Alright, so these rails are horrible, very not fun. Um, so I went to the store, got new blades to cut through, hopefully they'll cut a little faster. 
I tried a bunch of things already, cutting from underneath, doesn't really work, there's no space. Um, cutting through the top of the grinder doesn't work because you have to get really far down. Um, even cutting from the side takes like a really long time, but I don't really see any better options, so that's what we're going. One other problem with this approach is that we only have battery hand tools and the batteries were dying very quickly. Again, the reciprocating blades became very dull very fast. What ended up working the best for us was a very large grinding wheel. We used a 7 inch grinding wheel, maybe even a 9 inch would have worked well. And we were able to cut through the bolts from the side and pop each bolt as we were going. All right, people, we are still trying to grind away these rails. Um, nothing works, it's really hard. You can't really get anything out from the bottom. If you use a four inch grinding wheel or a four and a half inch grinding wheel, it can't reach the side. If you try and cut through them the long way, um, it just takes a long time. I tried a sawzall with some metal blades. Each blade was like becoming dull after one or two bolts, so that would take a very long time. So the only thing that works are the only thing that seems to work is a huge angle grinder with a cutoff wheel. This is a seven inch wheel. Um, and then with that, you're able to kind of stick it in straight and pop off the bolt from the side. Um, so that's what we're doing. We got six more rails to go. So we're just gonna grind through them and we'll let you know how it goes. Other update. We have been doing this whole project with portable battery powered tools. Um, couldn't find a battery powered 7 inch grinding wheel that would last long enough so this one is corded. We are borrowing my parents generator. Uh, it's in front of the bus because we're building out a storage unit so we have to run the generator to run the electricity for this thing. Luckily it's been fine but uh, takes a long time so this is not the most fun part of the building. We'll get through it. Also note that as you grind away with the wheels, they become smaller and smaller, and the smaller the wheel is, the harder it is to cut from the side. I think we used between 5 and 10 blades for the entire floor. Also, it's very easy to accidentally grind through the actual floor of the bus, so make sure you're being careful and really only cutting through the bolt and not the floor. One thing that helped was using a crowbar to apply upward pressure while you were cutting, because doing that made it a very clear and audible pop when you finally cut through the bolt. Notice that using this grinding wheel produced a lot of sparks and smoke, so I highly recommend using a respirator or even some kind of fan to help clear out the smoke while you're doing this. We strongly encourage wearing safety equipment like goggles, a respirator, long sleeves, and long pants to prevent injury. What you can see here is I actually cut off a thin strip of the aluminum with the grinding wheel before I started cutting from the side. This allowed me to get in at a better angle and reduced my risk of cutting through the floor. If you like what you're seeing, check us out on Instagram at Acroban Adventures where we post a lot of fun reels about build tutorials. Lessons learned from removing our floor out of the bus. One, it takes quite a lot longer than we originally expected it would because it's a very tedious job. Specifically, removing the wheelchair rails was extremely time consuming. It was very difficult to do. And we finally figured out a solution, but it took us quite a while to get to something that worked. So you're gonna have to be patient and you're just gonna have to get through it. Two, the screws that hold down the strips actually go all the way through the floor, so if you're trying to just remove those little metal strips, uh, it's not going to work. You actually have to unscrew it or cut the bolt. The wooden floor is also screwed through the floor, and in our bus at least, the screws were very rusted out on top, so most of them we could not use a screwdriver to extract, 
we had to basically rip the floor up and then grind off the top of the screw from the floor afterward. One other thing to note is that this is a very dirty job, so don't wear any clothes that you love. I would wear gloves. There's a lot of rusty metal sticking out places, um, and you're going to end up with a lot of garbage afterward. Tons of boards, rubber, metal, everything you can name, so plan accordingly. We ended up keeping most of ours in our bus and moving it around, but when we threw it out at the dump, I think we actually lost about 500 pounds worth of stuff. Pretty crazy. It definitely helped to have two people working to kind of lift and pry the wood and remove it. However, when we started removing the rails, we only had one grinder. You probably don't have two grinders either, so it was a bit tedious, um, and there's not really a good way to speed that up. So good to have two people to rip the wood out, but maybe you only need one person to kind of remove the rails. It's really important to make sure you're wearing the proper safety equipment, especially while you're grinding. It is not uncommon for the grinding wheels to shatter. Um, and because of that, you want to make sure that you're wearing protective clothing, especially protective eyewear. And you could see in our video, there was a ton of smoke when the grinding wheel was starting to hit the wood. So I certainly recommend a respirator, um, the kind that you might wear while you're painting something so that you're not breathing in all that crappy air. It actually kind of coated our entire bus in crappy residue, and we can still find some of that today, so you don't really want that going into your body. After seeing this, you might be thinking, do I really need to remove the floor? Is that something that's absolutely necessary? Can I save some time by not doing it? And we are gonna answer all those questions, our pros and cons, in another video that you can check out in our floor build series. We actually have four total videos related to just our floor. We have this video, the floor removal. We have the floor preparation for paint. We have the actual floor installation with insulation. And then we are gonna talk about whether or not you should remove your floor. You can check out all those videos in our build series or in the links below. All the tools we use in this video are linked in the description below. If you have any other ideas about how to remove those rails, please drop them in the comments below to help others out. Please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. We're Acrovan Adventures, and we'll see you next time.